G'day guys, welcome to Rumble's Fish Room. So today is a day of subscriber requests. Now, if you've got a request for the channel or a question, just ask me because A, I can help you by making a video about your question and B, you can help me by creating some content. So today we're actually going to talk about how I run a fish room at profit. Um, I, I put that in commas because it's not necessarily profitable, but that was the question that was asked, how I run a fish room and profit. So I'm going to keep it as that. And I, I did a breakdown on pricing in the live stream, but I'll do a quick recap on that. Alright, so how much money do I make? That's the first question on everyone's mind. Let's just get it open in the air before we get carried away with everything else. The full breakdown I did, um, somebody might fact check me because I can't remember the exact number on, on the live stream, but I think from memory it was about $100 a month. Now if you think about how much outlay I have and how many hours I put into the fish each week and that, it's definitely not worth it. If you don't enjoy fish, don't do it. Like it's, um, for me, breaking zero on a hobby is my goal. Um, if you've got a hobby that's not costing you money, that is a win in my book. So don't break into fish room building if you think you want to be a millionaire. Um, yes, there is like a few people who are like fish tycoons and um, they make money, especially on sellers make money, but um, I'm a firm believer against backyard on selling um, unless it's a storefront registered business I really don't like it um, but anyway let's look at how I got to that because there's a lot of people out there that their fish room actually runs in a negative so we'll start outside and basically my house before we get to the fish room all right so if we climb up this ladder here the sun's in my eyes We've got a bit of solar on the roof there. So that knocks about $150 to $200 a month off my power bill. So I feel like solar is almost a necessity for um, a fish room. Um, a lot of this goes back into the grid, but I kind of, I was thinking about crypto mining, but just it was a light thought, but I don't know if I'll ever do it or not. Um, so basically today we're on 33 kilowatts. Um, that's actually pretty good considering I haven't cleaned them. Uh, what's next? What's next? Alright, now if we step into my back garden shed. This is just like a lot of junk in here. A lot of you might not have seen this room. Some of the OGs would have because I've... I think I was on YouTube when I built this box. So this box is actually the muffler for that air pump. So that's why you can't actually hear the air pump in my fish room. But as you can see, from the moisture, it's actually water damaged. But I don't know, it kind of got to where it is now and it hasn't got worse over like, say the last 12 months. It's like it became, it's like it's dried out. I don't know what happened there. Maybe there's less moisture and humidity in the fish room. Oh, you know what it might be? It might've actually stopped getting wet when I put lids on the fish tank. Cause I never used to have lids on the tanks. Um, it still feels airtight, I can't feel it sucking any air. So anyway, the key of this thing, um, it's a G, GF180C. So 500 liters per minute, and it only draws 180 watts of electricity. Sorry guys, my camera died. So the air pump runs every single tank, but except for the Stingray tank, which I'll show you in a minute. Even my koi pond runs on air, Besides a tiny little pump which runs the elephant switch spray. I run everything on air guys. Except for the waterfall tank that we just set up. That is an exception. Obviously I can't lift, air, lift water high enough to go up to the top of that rack. What's that noise? Oh, it's just a tank. Alright, so now 
We need new fish room doors, that's the given. Um, so now let's, let's have a look at what else is going on in here. Alright, so this is the only tank in here that doesn't run off that air pump I just showed you. So that's a LP60 which runs this, this pond or tank down here. Now this tank here, that's 5,000 litres and that is running completely off air. So if anybody tells you your, big, your tank is too big to run on air or sponge filters, tell them they are wrong. Every single tank in here runs on air, 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 air. There is not one mechanical pump inside this fish room, not one. Um, all the lights, 24 volts, um, and they're only on when I'm in the room. I've got a solar skylight that's not plugged into any power. I really want to get another one of them for the other end. So basically, that's the only light in here during the day, just so the fish get their daytime, nighttime. And it's solar, so it follows the seasons for them, if they like the seasons, I don't really know. All right, so then let's talk about the insulation. This room has, in the roof, there's three layers of 100 millimeter bats. Um, in the walls, there's three layers of R1.5. It's like 40 mil thick with the silver sheeting on one side. There's three layers of that in the wall. Um, I've, it's, there's a, I've done skirtings, I've gapped everything. There's no drafts in here, except for the doors at the moment, because the door is actually hanging off the hinges. Um, so this room is actually insulated as much, if not more, than a cool room. And then this is one of the main key ingredients. G'day Watto, how are ya? Rest in peace buddy. Um, so Watto is up there watching over my fish room and he keeps us warm. Um, that air conditioner cut my power bill in half. Like literally in half. Um, 2.4 kilowatts. The air conditioner is actually technically too small for the cubic inches of the room. But the water acts like a medium which holds the heat. So this thing works fine. It's been on for like, I think three years now. I've never even turned it off. Set on 29, three years running. I don't turn it off in summer because my power bill is literally like $100 a month in summer with the solar panels and everything on. So then, what else is there that's power, power saving? Nothing really. I think that's about it. I think that covers the electricity side of things. So now that we've covered electricity, my power bill ranges from $100 a month to $250 a month. Or with the IBCs out there and stuff, it go, it's higher than that. But basically running this fish room without the IBCs and the 8 foot, this fish room cost me maximum middle of winter $200 a month to run. Now, not many fish rooms can say they run that cheap. Um, that is a key ingredient to me turning that $100 profit a month. The key ingredient is that power. Now, next thing is, next thing is fish food. Um, so basically that $100 a month profit, I, I worked that out of um, paying for fish food, but technically I don't actually pay for fish food. Shout out to Korean Pet Central. They supply all my extreme aquatic fish food. Um, so basically I don't have to pay for fish food. So that does add to my profits. Profits, we'll say profits because I always just spend it all on fish anyway. Um, so if there is cheaper foods you can use, um, there is ones that I think are okay and do are adequate but I'm not going to say it on the channel simply because um, I'm, I, I'm a huge ambassador for um, extreme aquatic fish food uh, and no I don't get paid to say that. Um, Korean Pet Central is a sponsor yes they supply me the food but I'm not sponsored by um, extreme aquatic fish food. Um, I just actually love the food that much 
if any, some of the OGs know, I swapped from um, New Life Spectrum to Extreme, and the 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 amount of breeding, extra breeding, was unreal. These flower horns gonna lay in a minute. I actually thought they might have already laid by the way they were cruising around the plate. And I've got a polystigma holding, that's exciting. They haven't bred for a while. All right, so, so the next thing was, how do I find the time to do everything? All right, so for anybody who doesn't know, I work six days a week at the moment. Um, I'm doing 55 hours a week. I work 10 hours a day, and I still run this fish room and upload to YouTube. So, um, I keep knocking this hose off. So, let's talk about the key thing, the number one thing that gets me through week by week. Automatic water change system, guys. I got to the point in fish keeping where I was spending so much time water changing. For me, it was either build this system or quit fish breeding, uh, not keeping, I would still keep fish. So basically, we've got tap water comes in here, there's a little solenoid down here, and then watch this. So the OGs know this one. How many times am I gonna say OG in this video? Oh, why is that lacking? If we go manual, station one, one minute. So this pump here turns on. And then see this little hose here? Water comes out of that hose. Now that is on every single tank in this fish room. That's just got a bit of air coming out of it. it takes take a minute to get around. But basically, some have got more hoses than others. Like if you look over here, we've got three hoses there, because that's a bigger tank. Um, that thing, so this system, I've done a video on it a long time ago. I might do a, a, a refresher video on it one day, like the whole system, but if we go turn that off, back on auto, and the pump turns off. So there's just a high pressure pump there, um, just a retic solenoid, like from your local garden center, and it's just, uh, the same, the controller is just from your garden center, Rainbird. Look, we're watering the garden, except in this case, the fish is the garden. So that saves me 10 hours a week, I reckon. Um, so the other thing is, I have bristle nose in every single tank. Um, I recently got more bristle nose. So you can see like this tank's got algae on the glass and on the bottom. So there's obviously no bristle nose in that tank. So I've actually got some growing out down there. And basically I just replenish the bristle nose in the tanks when I start to get algae. Look, there's some algae here. Um, I, don't, I don't clean the glass guys. I just add bristle nose when they're necessary. Um, obviously that little light there doesn't really make much algae either. Um, I'm actually surprised the flower horn tanks don't get algae because they don't have bristle nose in them. Look at this one, this one's obviously got no bristle nose. But, um, and also the other thing is, algae on the glass doesn't affect the fish health. So if the, the glass is dirty, I don't lose sleep over it. Um, the only thing I worry about is when customers come over, um, I do like to, I, I don't like them to be too dirty. Um, so, that, so basically, that was a that was a opposite to a deal breaker. Game changer, that's the word. So, um, if you see me talk about automatic water change systems on Facebook, um, sometimes I come across arrogant. I never mean to be arrogant. I, I mean to be um, super persuasive or super suggestive. I don't know what the word is, but anyway, I. I I try to really push people to go automatic water change system and I definitely know that it comes across arrogant sometimes but if I can be arrogant on Facebook and I convince one person to go automatic water changes I think I've done the right thing. Man, now I'm knocking more hoses over. Um, so 
that saves me a lot of time. I don't clean the tanks. Um, here's a good example of that. You guys have actually had a go at me about this before. How dirty that tank there gets. Um, I actually wouldn't mind doing another clean, mainly just to get the blue out. I'm not too worried about the brown, the sediment. I'm just waiting for this little stingray here to get a little bit bigger that it won't fit through the holes in that divider. And then that stingray will go in the middle tank and the stingrays keep the bottom nice and clean. So that problem will be solved rather shortly. Um, that was a bit of a veer off to the side. Now, the final, the final part to this is selling the fish. You need to sell the fish to get the money. Now, I haven't quite cracked this code yet. Um, I'm just very lucky that I have YouTube and I have a following and I have word of mouth because um, at the, lately my number one advertising has been on MeWe and it's not really winning. 99% um, of what I've been selling the last six months has been just word of mouth and people asking me via private messenger. So unfortunately I can't really give advice on where to sell the fish. Obviously fish store trade-ins are a good one to get your food. Um, I still trade in a bit um, at a couple of shops but <clears throat> I've been selling that much privately lately that I haven't had much for the shops. Um, so like what else? I don't know. MeWe is kind of taking off if you're in Perth. The Perth Cichlid Society MeWe is is kind of going, kind of not. Um, what's not, another option is Gumtree, but Gumtree is completely dead. Um, I can't think of anywhere else. Oh, um, a guy named Josh is trying to get ozfishsales.com.au going again. Um, I hope that's successful because I'll be jumping on board in that. Um, but yeah, the other one is sell to on sellers, which I already told you guys before. I'm not a fan of on selling. Um, then what else is there? Then I guess you've got having what fish to breed. Now this is a really tough question. Um, I would say flower horns because you can sell flower horns for lots of money but it's really not for everyone and I think that's why they hold their value. Somebody is messaging me today asking me about how to raise the eggs and stuff and I was giving them a, a item by item explanation on how to sort the, sort the eggs and clear the fungus and all that and he replied with wow it's really just really too hard. Um, so flower horns I don't think I'd put at the top of the list because of the difficulty. Um, if, you, if you're asking that sort of question, it's probably at the beginning of your fish keeping career. So flower horns, I would say no. So basically, African, then you go to Africans. Africans get the rare fish. But the problem is, if you've got a fish that's rare and, you, and somebody's advertising it, chances are they're breeding it and they're actually going to flood the market before you breed it. So things like, um, perfect example of this, the, the Mapanga Reds. Um, I paid $1,000 for them, uh, well actually more than $1,000 for 10 of them and now I can't even sell 10 for, I think I advertised 10 for $600 and I didn't even get one, one bite. And it's just because when I bought them, so many people bought them at the same time as me. So now the market's a bit flooded. So the best bet is to watch the market. When a fish floods the market, I use the redfin kadanga, kadanga as an example. So redfin kadanga flooded the market at the end of last year slash the start of this year. Basically buy the fish when it's out of flood. So Put the fry in a tank down the back and forget about them for six months. Let them grow out. 
by the time you're breeding them, the market won't be flooded because everybody would have stopped breeding them. Now that is a secret of mine that I, I always think about and it's the first time I've ever said it out on camera. So that's a little scoop. If, if I see a fish that is super flooded and I can get practically for free, get it. Put it in a back tank, forget about it. And um, like, I think the redfin kadanga is a prime example of that. So if you've got them now, I don't actually, I don't have them, but if you do, it, maybe even if you breed them now, you might be able to sell the fry in three months from now, but then even get rid of the parents and keep the fry and breed the second generation. By the time you breed them, the market would have turned around. And to be honest, I think there's more money to be made in a fish that was flooded and then disappears than a fish that's fresh to the country. Um, just an exciting little hot tip there. Please don't go buy the same fish as me and ruin my market. But anyway, I think that about covers most of the bases. If there's anything I've missed in this video, drop a comment below. I'll do another video um, to follow up this video if you want. And also, uh, maybe I'll do another video on the, on the water change system. I've done one before, but I think a fresh one will maybe i've forgotten something in the other video that i might mention or i don't know i just don't like linking videos that are older than like 12 months i just would rather do a new one but anyway guys if you like this video give a thumbs up if you want to subscribe for more well that's not the red button hit that red button and i'll see you guys tomorrow peace out